Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. Today we are going to be taking a look at this Dynamite Model Engine Compression Tester. Uh, before we do that, if you're into nitro engines, nitro vehicles, everything related, please like and subscribe. Uh, help me out and we'll have tons more coming on the channel. Alright, so the old Dynamite compression tester. Do I feel like this is a gimmick or is this something that uh, is useful to the nitro engine enthusiast? I, I personally would lean more towards the gimmick side. Uh, the way I feel about this is uh, by the time you are aware of its existence uh, and can track one down and get a hold of one, uh, at that point, you normally most people already uh, can tell if an engine has good compression or not. Um, telling if an engine has good compression is not the hardest thing to do on your own without this gauge. Um, like I said, uh, by the time you come across one of these, you, you pretty generally speaking, can, you know, read the compression on an engine. So at that, at, yeah, I think it's not very useful to uh, a nitro engine. It's certainly someone who's starting out and trying to learn engines. I don't think this is going to teach you a whole lot about them. On the other hand, let's say someone like me who is a collector uh, this is a mandatory piece. Uh, anyone who's serious about uh, collecting nitro engines uh, should have one of these in their collection. It's a mandatory piece, I feel. And, you know, I did use this thing uh, for uh, quite a while. I, I, tried, I tried to gather data from it and make use of that data. So... Let me go into real quick what I figured out about this thing. Uh, you get a, a very different reading depending on how dry the engine is, okay? Let's say you grab an engine that has been sitting uh, in a box for a year, all right? Pull it out of the box, put this on it. Uh, you're going to get a dry reading. There's no lubrication on the cylinder, okay? So you hook it up, you get a reading. Let's say you get 40, all right? That's pretty low. You take the exact same engine, don't change the piston sleeve, don't do anything other than throw a couple drops of oil on the cylinder, which is how it would be, let's say uh, you just ran this engine today, all right? Took it out, ran it around, you shut it off by plugging the exhaust, okay? And you brought it home. Now you want to check the compression. That engine is going to be nice and oily in the cylinder. So that exact same engine that you could have got a reading of 40 on when it was dry, now you're going to get a 65, 70 on with a nice uh, oily cylinder. So what is the proper reading for this engine? You know, you know what I mean? So the way I look at it, uh, me, you can't. I mean, you could dry every engine, but the easier thing to do is just every time I test an engine, I put three drops of oil uh, down the glow plug into the cylinder. That way, every engine I test has the same level of oiliness so that now I can have a standardized reading across uh, multiple engines because they are all tested at the same level of oiliness, uh, moisture in the cylinder. You understand? All right. So let's go ahead and test a couple engines here. Uh, try to pull out ones that I think this one is probably right in its uh, middle of its life cycle. Oh, no glow plug in it. Uh, somewhere along the middle of its life cycle. Um, and this engine is brand new. That is a XTM XLV engine um, without it doesn't come with that back plate or that carburetor but anyways 
Uh, this one is brand new, but not broken in. Uh, an engine will, the highest reading you'll get from an engine is right after it's broken in, maybe got a quart or two on it, and it's getting, starting to get into its maximum power days is when you'll get the highest compression. A, a brand new engine uh, will not read as high as it will uh, after it's broken in and seated together uh, the piston and sleeve. So we should get, I would guesstimate maybe 60, 70 or so out of this one and probably uh, 80, 85, 90 maybe or so out of that one. Um, the way I, uh, I come to understand uh, anywhere in here in the 40 or under range, you're pretty much on your way out or toast. Um, anywhere in the 40 to 60, 70, 40 to 70 range is an engine that's in its life cycle. Uh, you know, down this end, it's probably got three, four gallons on it, maybe two, three left up here. Maybe it's only got two, three on it and has four or five left. You know what I mean? That's your range there. And then you get up into very high new-ish engines are up in the 80, 90 range. I don't think I've ever seen any go past maybe 100, 105. Uh, I've never gotten way down in this area uh, on the pressure rate gauge. So I believe this one's going to be prior in the 60 to 70 range and that one because it's, it'll be up higher, but not as high as it could be once it gets broken in. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we got. So uh, to, again, standardize three blop, 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 three drops of oil down in the cylinder and then give it a little spinning over, make sure it coats all the way around. All right. Always have a protector on there to make sure no debris gets up in there. Now, the, one of the main downfalls of this thing, it's only for standard plugs. Uh, they never made one of these for turbo engines. Although I personally have thought of a way to make an adapter for turbo engines. That's another story. All right, so we, you can see that there's two sections on here that spin independently of each other. This bottom one, you can lock down to the engine, right? It's locked on good. And this top one will still spin, this top section. So let's go ahead and get to where you can see that gauge good. I'm gonna grab my absolutely diesel dual battery, dual motor roto starter here. All right. And let's see what we got. Now, the way this thing works, let's say you're doing a pull start. Your first pull is going to get you up a little bit. Second pull is going to get you up a little higher. And then you'll keep rising every time you pull it. But then there'll be a, a point where it kind of stops. And no matter how much you pull it, it won't go any higher. So that is your final reading, right? As high as it will go. So I'm going to give this one little tap and you'll see it'll go up to under 20, all right, on that one, give it another little tap. Now we're up like 34-ish uh, area, around in there. You know what, did I not, I'm oh, sorry. Damn, I'm a jerk. All right, uh, also gotta make sure it's not, you know, you can actually see it. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead now and just spin this thing until it gets up to where it wants to be. All right, so that is our compression reading on this engine. Looks like right at 55, all right? So that is actually a um, little bit lower than I would like. Uh, still will run and drive fine, um, but, and again, you know, this thing is not exactly precise. You know, it's gonna give you, you can look at that number and say, oh, okay, I'll get a, two gallons, four quarts in a tank uh, out of this thing before it dies. No, it's not an exact science. Um, but 
that's a little bit lower than I like for an engine that, you know, should be running good. So that may be a little bit uh, older, uh, worn out. You know what? I do have two of these. Maybe it's the other one I thought of that was a little bit newer. All right. So anyways, we got about 55 on that one. Let's go ahead and clear it. This is the clear button right there to drop the pressure down. All right. Now let's check our... Uh, XTM engine there. We got to do a different starter, of course, because can't can't be easy. So now we got our pro start here, and again, we'll give it. Oh, this one still has a plug in. Let's take that plug out. We'll give it our three drops of oil. One, two, and three. And just, now this engine being new, this won't, even with no uh, glow plug in it, this one won't spin all the way over uh, because it's brand new. It'll get stuck in the cylinder. So I'm just kind of spinning it back and forth a little bit, trying to get that oil uh, distributed around the cylinder. All right, so now that we've done that, we can hook up our compression tester. Now this one should be higher than the other, um, even though not as high as it will be once it gets broken in, like I've said. All right, so make sure that's on there good. And we'll hold that to where you can see it, and we'll go ahead and see what we got on this one. So give it one little tap first. That one didn't do anything. All right, something's wrong here. Yeah, that's 75. That's about, uh, I was expecting maybe a little bit more out of that you know what just for testing purposes let's go ahead and put some more because it's a 28 that's a 18 that has a larger uh piston and sleeve let's put a little bit more oil on it and see uh it should with more oil give a higher reading because it can make more pressure um, maybe I didn't get enough oil in there to get it totally uh, coating coated the, the the cylinder. All right, so we're clear. We're on there, good. And let's see what we got now. And we're right at. 80. Where were we with this one? Like 55? Yeah, this one will certainly, um, once this engine's broken in, it'll get up to like the 90, 95. Like I said, maybe right around 100 is about as high as I've seen them go. Um, but so that is the Dynamite model engine compression tester. Um, Again, a cool piece to have in the collection. I certainly uh, want want it in my collection. If I didn't have one, I would be looking for one for my collection. But, you know, again, something that you're going to use and, and gather some useful data from, probably not. Uh, but again, really cool to have and, you know, useful to an extent. Thank you very much for stopping by. Again, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.